Hi, Buki. I heard you just got your heart broken and you need some books to help you get through it. Let's get into the books that got me through a heartbreak or two or three, and I know they'll be just perfect for you. First of all, how are you? I'm Banjo, and let's get this heart sorted, fixed, better. These are the books for you if you got your heart broken by a friend. This is for you if it's a breakup by a childhood friend or you guys just drifted apart because you became different people and you just don't have the same interests anymore or someone did something very, very shady. Shady, shady boots, pure, actually evil. And that's what happens in Sula by Toni Morrison. These are two friends that they grew up together, childhood best friends, like sisters actually. And they were each other's comfort person. They were each other's, you know that Grey's Anatomy line? You're my person. Pam. Yeah, you are. She is my person. That was Nell and Sula in Toni Morrison. And they just grew apart. And from growing apart, something very tragic happens that one of them does to the other. And it is just the most heartbreaking friendship breakup that I have ever read. It made me feel more grateful for my friends that I do have. And it also made me realize in order to have high quality friends, you need to put in high quality effort. And three, it also made me realize a lot of things about friends that grow apart and it's perfectly okay to have friends that grow apart but don't force it. If you guys are growing apart, just let it grow apart. It doesn't have to be forced. And this book helps me to realize that. And I'm telling you, if you are going through a friendship, childhood, or long-term friendship breakup, just pick up this one. First of all, I mean, towards the end as well, you're gonna be like, well, at least my friend didn't do that, hopefully not. So, this one is the one that I would recommend for the friendship that's breaking up because of unrequited romance. If you are that person who you wanted to go from friends to lovers and your friend is like, I'd rather really not. It's a no for me, thank you. And now you genuinely feel like, okay, well, I can't really be that close of friends to you, but I still want to care for you from afar. This is the book that I would recommend because that's exactly what happens in this book. We have three friends and one of the friends likes the other one and he has been putting out the signs and the feelings and he wants this to go from friends to lovers. And the other friend is like, I don't think so. I actually like your friend instead. And he still gets to care for her from afar. He still gets to love her from afar, but still respect the friendship and still respect her boundaries. And this is the book that I would recommend because it just really shows you how to still be a friend without disrespecting the other person's boundaries. It still shows you that yes, or, you know, just let them go and be respectful of their boundaries. I will warn you, there is one character that you're gonna fall in love with in this book. Don't fall in love too much because there is a scene. Ah, oh my gosh, it is so sad. It is so sad. So just make sure you're in the right space of mind to read this one because there is grief, there is death, there is friendship breakup. It's, it's a lot, but it is absolutely worth it if you can sit through it and get through it and if the gaming doesn't bother you. Hi. If you guys are breaking up your friendship because it's now feeling more like a competition than a friendship, it is a slow, slow, slow book and it's actually a series. Or if you don't want to read the book, honestly, just watch the series. The series is fine. <laughs> it's, it's one of those rare series that I would actually recommend if you don't want to read the book because the book is slow and you can't just read just one of these books. You need to read the entire series because reading just one is not going to be enough. And if you're just like, I ain't got the time for that right now. I, my heart, girl, I have watched like, this is not the time. Just watch the series. It is so beautiful. And I think the series still keeps to the originality and the authenticity of the book and still gets through the friendship breakup. I mean, it goes to like 60 years of their friendship. So this one is real, but their friendship was kind of toxic. Don't worry. I'm still going to talk about romantic breakups that's coming. But another breakup that I think Ah, it just cuts so much deeper than a romantic, oh, we don't, we, this is not working. It's family breakups. You know that moment when you need to excommunicate family members from your life in order for you to live your authentic, happy, blessed, beautiful, amazing life? 
Yeah. That breakup is hard. It's very, very hard. This book right here. Let me tell you, when I read this book, it is about this girl who grows up in this family with her siblings. And one parent is narcissistic. The other parent is basically following the other parent, trying to keep the peace, trying to be the dutiful wife. And basically the narcissistic, slightly also deranged parent takes the entire family on this wild, insane upbringing. Like pulls the kids out of schools, basically kind of like a mini cult until the actual person in this book just essentially says, you know what, I'm out. I am out, I need to get out of here. And she leaves the family. She basically starts school all over again at the age of, I believe, 18 and hasn't spoken to her family members since. And it is insane. It is so insane. And it shows the courage and the pain and the trauma and how that doesn't necessarily leave all the way, but how you can deal with it and how to become better in spite of it. And it just, it gets into the heart of things. And it is such a well-written book and it's a memoir. So it's very real, very honest, very thorough. Another one that I would always recommend is I'm glad her mom died. She was in Hollywood and she was an actress and essentially gets into basically how her mother controlled her entire life, abused her and created this very toxic, toxic space for her. Her mother essentially wanted her to live out her dreams. Her mother had this dream that she wanted in her life. And because she wasn't able to achieve that dream, she basically wanted her child to create and achieve that dream for her. And I know it's not a novel idea of parents having kids to carry out their legacy, but their legacy is essentially just things that they weren't courageous enough to do or things that they gave up on themselves and then they want their kid to basically be them by proxy. It is a very toxic thing that some parents do. I don't even think we can call them parents because it's so toxic and that's what happens in this book. And this girl goes through a very, very, very long process of healing, of finding out what that looks like to basically not have a mom and her mom did die um and now she's no longer an actress so <laughs> that goes to tell you exactly how toxic and problematic her parent her mom was if you're just like i don't want a memoir i want some ooey gooey goodness with the breakup the heartbreak i would totally recommend a love song for ricky wilde Okay, A Love Song for Ricky Wilde is fiction. It's actually a romance novel, but it is romance novel with depth, with emotional depth. And a lot of the emotional depth comes from the character who grew up in this very dysfunctional, abusive, toxic family, where very similar to Educated, but this one is they're wealthy. They're rich, they're wealthy, and they basically want all their kids to follow this dictated path that the parents have set. By the parents, I mean the dad, even though all the kids are girls problem all around and he is mansplaining man managing all their lives and it is awful the family is terrible and the mom is just like yeah well you need to follow what your dad says because your dad is the man and if you want to be married and if you want to fulfill your purpose as a woman you need to be easy to love and in order for you to be easy to love you basically just need to listen to the man it is toxic and they're highly melanated. So I really enjoyed that book. And it still has the emotional depth and it follows the character's arc and it follows the Ricky's arc, which is the main character. It follows her arc of leaving her family, creating a life for herself, finding found family and still dealing with the pain of not having the love and the adoration and the full family functionality that she sees in other families. And I think a lot of people who have gone through family breakups or are going through family breakups or are thinking of saying bye bye snip snip to some family members will definitely relate to this one because it's also very well written. It's funny, it's rich, and it has romance just in case you don't wanna go all the way into the pain. Finally, 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 we are getting into the romantic heartbreak. Now, we're gonna break down the different behaviors that led to the breakup of the relationship and the book's 
that will get you through those moments because similar things happened in a relationship. If I miss anyone, if I miss any situation, if your ex did something different or if you did something different because you're the reason the relationship broke up, put it in the comments and trust me, I have a book for it. If the relationship broke up because of cheating, this could be us by Kennedy Ryan. Point blank done. He cheated. He was the worst sitting small. If he was just terrible. He, what did he do? But the main one was that he just cheated on her repeatedly, repeatedly and she just kept being like, mm, maybe, maybe not. Is he cheating? I know he's cheating, but like we have kids and uh, there are kids involved until he did the worst of the worst and basically tried to get her in jail. Jail. Mm hmm. Prison. <laughs> it was bad. And I think this book just speaks a lot to something that I call it the Kool-Aid that they feed to women or they feed to people in relationships that are the caring ones in the relationship. And it's that you have to endure. You know, they'll keep telling you, oh, but relationships are not perfect. Oh, but remember, like, they still have some good qualities. Oh, they're not all bad, babe. It's not until they become the devil that you need to break up with them. If they give you one side, my belief is run. But that's just me. That's that's just me and those are lessons that I have learned from reading these books. It's just one sign is enough. Bye bye. And this book really gets into all the signs that she kept seeing but she kept enduring. She kept giving him another chance. She kept, oh it's fine. Oh he'll get over it. Oh he apologized until the very last moment which he still apologized and was still like but you know we can always work this out yeah this is the book that's going to get you to just block that ex that cheated on you or if you're the one who cheated on your ex block that behavior from your own life because ugh, it's just it's not okay okay it's such a very well written book in my opinion it is kennedy ryan's best work yet i am a kennedy ryan stan down down like she's one of my auto buy writers and i'm so glad i found her this year i am ugh, i'm such a fan i am such a fan because she just writes heartbreak and she writes adult relationships very well and this in my opinion is her best work yet and it also just talks about friendships and the roles that friendships play when you are going through a romantic breakup and how important it is to have the right friends when you're in a relationship and how to maintain friendships while you're also in a relationship. It is just such a very well written book for people who are going through a romantic breakup. For the ladies, get information. If you're just like, you know, I am losing my mind it is days of abandonment because this woman lost her mind. Like, no, but like, actually she lost her mind. She got it back. But when that man left her, she lost her mind because she had sacrificed and dedicated every single part of herself and who she is as a person to that marriage. And this man just, he was like, mm. Now that you've done that, I actually don't think I like you anymore. So I'm gonna go for someone who is like 20 years younger than you. Cute. Mm, love that, yeah. And that's essentially what happened in this book and she loses it, like for real. She does a lot of things that a lot of people do when a relationship ends, which is, I mean, she has the post breakup hookups that feel empty, but you're just like, will this feel like something? And she goes through that moment. She has the, you know what? I'm just not gonna talk to anyone anymore moment. She has the depresso era. She went through all the eras of a heartbreak that you can imagine. It is so well written, but I have to say, it is so depressing. <laughs> this is still one of the best books I have ever read in my life, hands down. And I have read a lot. Open Water by Caleb Hazum and Nelson. Oh my gosh. So good. There are these two kids and they grew up together and as they're growing up, they grow apart and then they get into a relationship and he essentially breaks her heart. But now he's dealing with what that looks like for him because his heart is also broken. And there are just so many lines in this book that really capture the human experience of a heartbreak 
of shame, of grief through a heartbreak and losing someone in that romantic sense, but also when you've lost not just your partner in a relationship, but also your best friend, it's a double whammy, okay? It's a double whammy. And that's what happens to the character in this book. And it is just so, so good. And I always recommend this book to anyone who is going through that type of experience that is awful. If that is you, I am sorry. Um, but you will get through it. You'll be, it will be better. It'll be fine. You'll be more than fine. You'll be fabulous. Another one from the male perspective is also Giovanni's Room. Another five-star book by James Baldwin. It is a classic book. So just know you are getting the a vintage heartbreak okay and it is this guy essentially who is in the closet and he hasn't come out but he's trying to hide the fact that he's in the closet by dating a girl basically just wasting her time and it is getting into his heartbreak because the guy that he was actually dating ends up leaving him not in a very conventional sense he just he left him and basically just the heartbreak of that and, and the importance of community when you're going through something like that of finding yourself and why it's very important to find yourself before you try to find yourself in other people's life because you might be doing more harm than good. Don't waste people's time. That's Giovanni's room without giving spoilers. I hope I didn't give spoilers. When you're ready to get back out there, you know, when you're ready to start going on dates again and, you know, to seeing what fish is in the water, isn't though the water is not that big and the fishes are kind of debatable honestly one that i would recommend is how to not die alone this book was written by she was like the behavioral science at, at hinge and studying the behaviors of people on the app itself and how relationships work and the people who actually end up getting together on hinge and the people who don't and basically she talks about the different things that happen in a relationship and how some people just will never find their happily ever after and what could be holding people back from getting back into the dating scene or dating well or actually finding your person without wasting your own time. I didn't think it was going to be good. I really didn't because I don't like self-help books. A lot of them are not well written at all but this one it had its it had its moments. It had its moments you know it still had some things that I was like, mm, this is kind of repetitive or this is just glossing over a much bigger topic. But overall, I think when people are going through a heartbreak, no one really wants to be slammed head on with facts and science and numbers and research over and over again. You want something that's more approachable and relatable. That's this book. There are certain books that just capture the essence of love, in my opinion and in friendships, in romance, in family, what that looks like. Now, this book by Bell Hooks, All About Love is actually more of a paraphrased, less dense version of this one. And if you don't want to get into all the science and research of this one, All About Love is a pretty decent summary of it. What love looks like in different situations. If you're just like, honestly, these are all well and good, but I just want a movie. Past lives. End of story. Leave Bridget Jones alone. Another one that I would always, always, always recommend, always recommend, is this one right here. These two, no one has written heartbreak like these two in a romantic relationship. This one, I don't even want to give spoilers. I'm just going to say they're romantic relationships but there are layers to the romantic relationship and ah uh, they did not get back together one of them is one of them is an amicable breakup the other isn't but the heartbreak is definitely there and well past lives is more so identity and finding yourself i hope you feel better honestly because heartbreaks are rough and tough please like subscribe and comment so that i'll be able to read more books and have more recommendations for you and all your ailments